hello, 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 hello. <laughs> good evening, good morning, good afternoon, and all those other things in between, honey. How are you, my two sippers? How is everyone doing out there? At whatever time that you're catching this, if you're catching it live right now or if you're catching it in the replay somewhere, how is everyone doing, honey? Thank you for coming on here. This is yours truly, Demetrius Big Meats Taylor. And, honey, we are right here and right now. Honey, you are dishing the tea, darlings. <laughs> With Big Meats right here and right now, honey. These are uh, called honey, the Donut Factory um, Commentaries. I was going to say Chronicles. I might just change it to Chronicles. But the Donut Factory Commentaries, because why? Y'all know here I'm here at the Donut Factory, honey. Sitting up here putting me in making the donuts and things now if y'all hearing this noise out here it's because we got the children up in here they are cleaning out the grease traps and stuff in the kitchens and things so that's what all of that is okay but right now honey i'm going to um get into this and i want to i'm gonna be as brief as possible huh. okay y'all know talking is a hobby of mine every time i say i'm gonna be brief is when i end up going on these little cutesy cutesy little rants and things however I want to come with y'all today, honey, because I want to talk to the men for God. Now, ladies, if you're going to be listening in, I want you to listen and, and hopefully I can um, uh, be of enlightenment and stuff to, to clue you in on a few things. Because one of the things that we talk about here uh, with, with being human and being a part of the world is, you know, women, y'all expect a lot from men. Y'all want the man to do any and everything and oftentimes you don't realize the sacrifices that it takes to be in a man um you don't realize um the struggles that it takes to you know to hold up what what being a man is supposed to be about and oftentimes i think we as men or as males uh, become a little jaded to it because we end up trying to live up to these expectations and these fantasies of what this is supposed to be. And uh, societal definitions of what it's supposed to be and things. And sometimes, you know, I won't say we fall short, but the expectations of what being a man is supposed to be in this world, honey, may not be we may not meet those expectations for for them for some of us or whatever, and so it bec it becomes a whirlwind. And so today, I want to come to you, and let's just talk. I want you guys to weigh in with me, and let's talk about what it means to um, be being and becoming a man in this world. Okay. What it is, you know, the ups and downs, the ins and outs and carrying on. Uh, how is it that we sit up and uh, how do we get caught up in our own viciousness? How do we get caught up in our own whatever the case may be? You know what I'm saying? Uh, and let's let's have some real talk. You, you know what I'm saying? Let's 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 dish and be real. Uh, but before I get started, let me invite you guys, please go over and check out my new website and we've had to redesign it. So I think you'll enjoy it. Honey, go over to www.dishingtea.com. That's www.dishingtea.com. I'll put it down here in the comments and stuff so y'all can catch that. Okay, go check that out for me and uh, make sure you go uh, scroll down to the bottom of the first page and subscribe because we do have an adult section on the website um, where uh, on the radio show we've interviewed um, what so far we have six um, adult film entertainers that we've um, interviewed the things. And if you want to have access to those records and to those interviews, you have to subscribe because I have adult, you know, some of their pictures and stuff up there and I didn't want that to be so loose. So that's an 18 and over uh, category of things. So you have to subscribe in order to get access to that particular page. Oh, oh, oh. so say la vie. So we're saying all of that. Uh, let's get into this. Whew. <laughs> 
I'm going to start with the obvious thing and then I'm going to try to work my way around because one of the things about being a man in this particular world is that uh, oftentimes we um, we forget that or not not forget no, no that's the, not, let me let me start that over oftentimes like I said I'm going to the obvious because and, and I'm gonna go sexually first if I start there this this might just turn everything around uh, in the game of sex uh, we, men seem to thrive there you know what I'm saying we tend to want to uh, let our sexual prowess become our everything you know we tend to want to allow for our our nature our sexual attraction our being our sexual performances and carrying on that tend to be the nature of who we are that tend to sit down there and solidify everything most relationships and things are based on the sex that we have as long as you've given us some good dick child or for those of us who are lgbt um as long as you can, you know, if you're giving it or taking it, child, long as it's good and things of that nature, everything seems to be all right. Everything seems to be okay. You know, everything is 100 and all of that kind of jazz. However, what we have forgotten is that within that particular realm, honey, we've forgotten how to no not forgotten how what we have done is we have allowed sex to be our only way of communication uh of, of strong rich communication that is uh sex has become the way that we are able to show you how we love how we this how we that and carry it on and we have allowed that to be our voice we have allowed that to be um the the answer the call if you will and oftentimes because of a good sexual performance it becomes misconstrued to mean everything else and i'm sure uh men y'all are out there y'all understand what i'm talking about because you know when you had a good session and care no child you end up getting stalkers and things and folks who act like they don't know how to let it go how to let it be you know, you get folks who, who swear they in love, honey, and all they have is that particular moment. And then they're basing everything on that moment. How many of us have been uh, in relationships or you have had long-term sexual partners simply because the sex was, was cute and good, you know? And in that particular moment, I'm going to go here because... We as, as LGBT, and I'm, and, and I'm saying LGBT, but I mean gay men because I'm, I'm talking to the men folk. We as gay men, we have become a little bit more in touch with ourselves, if you will, because, you know, for those of us who are not the most masculine and carrying on, and, you know, to make it plain, those of us who are bottoms or versatiles, you know, we tend to have a little bit more say about our bodies. We, we understand what our bodies are and carrying on. We know what we like, what we don't like. But for our masculine brothers, you know, the masculine gay men who are tops and our straight brothers, you know, who all you know is my dick is supposed to go in the hole. <laughs> OK. And those of you who treat it that way, I'm not talking about those who are I'm going to I'm talk about I'm, I'm going to talk to to for gay men. I'm talking to those who claim you are total tops. OK. And in my book, anyone who say they are a total top. You are just a gay man who wishes he was straight, okay? Because you are not engaging in the person. It becomes a very selfish thing. It's a very, 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 very selfish thing because you're not orally involved unless you are the recipient. You know, it's all about, okay, I got, I, I'm got. supposed to do the sticking and this, that, and the other, and all of that. My straight brothers, you know, you are one and the same, honey. That, that there's where we know. You know, you know, when you're with a woman or whatever, honey, you're supposed to be the one on top. You doing the dicking down and carrying on. You may not go downtown because a lot of brothers still don't. You're supposed to get your dick sucked in this, that, and the other. And that's just it because this is what men do. However, I went all that way to say that we as gay men who are a little bit more seasoned and in tune with our bodies, you know, we know what we like and what we don't like. We're willing to explore a little bit. And... 
one of the things about being and becoming a man in this particular society and in our world is that we're not given the permission or allowance to have that exploration. If men were allowed to explore their bodies and to understand all of their erogenous zones, then what you perceive to be something gay would not. It would just be something that you enjoy or not. And then you're able to move on. You know, we have this whole big old thing with the whole Dwight Howard and this and the other. You know, a lot of a lot of folks are coming out. We have a lot of a lot of new things. You know, have y'all y'all been seeing this stuff on Tumblr? We're all we're Tumblr ain't gonna be no more. We'll talk about that in a minute. Have y'all seen this stuff on Tumblr and and newer movies and carry on? Where we're seeing a lot of um, a lot of men who are uh, being penetrated by women. You know, with strap-ons and this, that, and the other. Uh, we're seeing a lot more of that these days. That these are not gay men, you know, that's having sex with women. These are men who have found out that this is what they like. Uh, we've seen a lot of straight men now who have um, succumbed to, you know, having their ass ate and carrying on. Because why? You know, it's, it's, you're seeing that in porn now. You see a lot more women, you know, going and, and they're eating a the man out and carrying on now. I have to admit, this is going to sound sexist as hell because I still have to get used to that persona, okay? Because it's not something that, that, you know, that I'm used to seeing or whatever. And it chips me out from time to time, particularly depending on the woman, you know? So I was like, girl, you too pretty to be doing all that. Or you, all your hair is in the way. You know, there's this fucked up mentality and carrying on. And it's sexist, I know. Uh, at the same time, uh, it supports what I'm saying because we as a society have been conditioned to what the male roles are, to where, you know, anything that goes against that grain becomes an issue. Um, so we have that and, and carrying on. But uh, in the sexual realm, if men were able to explore their bodies, understand that the prostate is the man G spot, honey, just like when you go up in a woman, you got to hit her spot. Well, with a man, if you go up in him and hit that spot, that's the spot. But because our society and stuff is talking about how gay this is and this, that, and the other, men will not allow themselves to explore. Hell, you won't even go do it for the fucking prostate exam. Ain't but a 45-second test, if that. But we, got, we get so hell-bent about anything, ain't nobody putting nothing up in my ears or blah, blah. You know, we, we so rigid on that. Because what we have allowed society to say what that's supposed to mean. We have allowed for the idea of someone who is receiving, okay, on the receiving end. You know, if you're the bottom, if you're taking the dick and you this, that, and the other, then that has still been a sign of weakness in this society. Regardless of what we have said, or regardless of what has been shown and carrying on, particularly in gay relationships when you have two masculine brothers and the whole idea of that still seems to fuck up our straight counterparts because in their minds, this is still a masculine versus feminine kind of energy. Somebody got to be the bitch. Who the bitch? And if you see two football player like dudes that they're, you know, they can't, they can't fathom that. And I'm, I'm taking that particular route. Like I said, I was going to hit the sexual area of this first because this is where I'm, I know I'm going to get your attention, <laughs> okay? Uh, and what it is to identify with being a man and becoming a man, okay? I am not the most masculine man. In fact, my masculinity is still in question at times. I've become more comfortable with it because at one point in time I was running from it because of what I deemed masculinity was, was standing for at the time. I didn't like the images that were presented to me. I did not like um, what um, I did. I just didn't like what it was supposed to have meant. And when, as a child, you know, my father was not a good example of it for me. My uncles were not. At least, at least my father's brothers. I'll put it that way. My mother's brothers, um, though I had more interaction with them than I did with my dad's brothers. You know, they were more professional men. So I saw the business side of them. My dad's brothers were more that street side, the hustle side, you know. 
Um, and so in our interactions, it, it was very minimum because, you know, we were all guys. So, we, you know, it wasn't all that. It was more so like, okay, hey, you know, shit, the food over there, you know, hey, you want a beer? You know, when I, went, when I became uh, an adult. Um, but, you know, it was that kind of thing. But shit, otherwise than that, hell. Hold on. Go ahead. Copy. So because of that, you know, we 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 did not. Uh, you know, it, it, it wasn't a to do, you know, so that interaction was not all of that. You know what I'm saying? So in this world of becoming a man, it becomes uh, it becomes difficult. It becomes challenging because now it's like, OK, what is it that I want to become? You know, what kind of man do I want to be? And oftentimes we don't answer that question because or have an answer for it, because most times our dads or our uncles or whatever, we're supposed to emulate that that we, that we see. And kids are going to do that anyway. But then when you become at a point where you want to question it and be like, OK, who am I? OK. What kind of man am I to become? You know, those particular questions sometimes go unanswered. Sometimes they are rendered um, to be this whole thing of, well, it, it makes sense if you do this and it makes sense if you do that and et cetera, et cetera. Y'all, I'm sitting up here looking at the cameras because I just had, I had to make sure that the children are coming in here the right way. And okay, yeah, that was my, my guy. Okay. So, you know, um, becoming a man in this particular world doesn't, um, it leaves us questioning, okay? It leaves us in, in this quandary. And then mix with the whole idea of the street element because now we got to talk about how much of a man are you? What a man do and what a man don't. Okay, how hard you are, you know, and if you're not a fighter, if you don't know how to whip somebody's ass, if you don't know how to stand up and this, that, and the other, then you're not a man. If you don't know how to shoot a gun, if you don't know how to this, if you don't know how to that, then you're not a man. Then it becomes listening to the music, you know, and I say this about hip hop all the time, because when hip hop first got, became, you know, a, a genre of music, you know, with the onsets of the Sugar Hill Gang and carrying on, you know, Eric B and Rakim and, and uh, KRS-One and, you know, when we had all of that, Kumo D and, you know, those children. And, you know, then you had the fun stuff. You had, you know, uh, um, um, the Humpty Dance. What, 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 what was, are they Diggable Plan is the name of the group? Is that the right name? I, I'm just calling the Humpty Dance children. The Humpty Dance children... You had Beers Marquis, you had Will Smith, LL Cool J. You know, when, when, when we had all of that, Run DMC, of course, you know, when we had all of that and hip hop was coming a genre, okay, Curtis Blow. <laughs> um, it was fun and, you know, everybody was listening to it, you know, and this, that, and the other, blah, 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 blah. But then all of a sudden, when the streets started to take over and, and the genre changed and it became gangster rap, then all of a sudden your masculinity became challenged or you wasn't a real man, quote unquote. I hate that term. Oh, shit. Go ahead. Copy. So... You know, when, when all that hit the scene, then it became, uh, now your masculinity became challenged, okay? You weren't the real man if you was listening to certain kind of tunes or whatever, or this meant that you were gay because you were listening to something else. You know, um, back when I was coming up, you know, in my teenage years, the, the, the 80s, you know, between 82 and 89, child, it was it was ridiculous because 82, you know, we, we had the, uh, the onset of the, of the hip hop and carrying on by about 84, 85. 
with Luke and, and Ice T and Ice Cube and Vanilla Ice and you know all this other, everything became that way. Then all of a sudden, oh, use a sissy because you like listening to Diana Ross, or use a sissy, or use a fag because you listen to to Luther Vandross, or you ain't hard enough because I'm not listening to to Ice Cube, honey. I was listening to. Uh, 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 Will Smith, you know, parents just don't understand. And so it became this whole big old to do about what it is about your masculinity, about being a man. So, you know, here, I'm bringing all this stuff up because we are at a conundrum now and trying to understand and trying to define manhood these days because it's, it's coming up under fire. It's coming and, and being challenged all the time. And so the question becomes to you, what kind of man are you? And what kind of man do you want to be? You know what I'm saying? Because I've always came up under the, the, the guise of, I had to define my own man. I had to define what masculinity was going to look like to me. And even though at one particular point I was living my life very androgynously um, with, with, with my dress, because I, I would wear uh, women's captors with men's pants and carrying on, you know, because that was my expression at the time. And now, you know, I had to, when, when that phase of my life ended, uh, I, it was time for me to embrace my masculinity. It was time for me to embrace the man that I am. It was time for me to embrace those, what I consider to be flaws. Okay. And to love my entire self. And so then I had to understand that there's some things about me, honey, that ain't so feminine that, you know, at one point in time, you know, I used to sit down there and, and get upset about. But because mm, here I'm not the greatest housekeeper child. at one point in time, you know, in my head, because I was raising kids or whatever, helping my mama raise my brother and sisters. You know, we had to keep the house clean. So I'm sitting up there trying to be a good housewife in my head because this was anti-man you know men don't do this you know what i'm saying and the crazy thing about it <laughs> is that my father probably is the best housekeeper that i know because that's what he does he likes to go strip buildings and all that kind of stuff and you know he does all that kind of work and my daddy shit i think in some regards he can out clean my mama and my mama hell mama got it on lock you know but what was funny about that is when growing up and I had him for the first eight years of my life, that there was women's work. We, you know, he, he detested that my mother had me in the kitchen washing dishes and carrying on. He detested the fact that I was cooking. You know, oh my God, shit. Okay, that was, that was an uproar. But men, what is it that we do today to, to, to identify ourselves as men? Why is it that we have a struggle with understanding the concept that I am the man that I am? Why is it that we go to we have to go to Knuckle City whenever we feel as though our masculinity is challenged? What is it about that that says all of that? You know, uh, in this particular day and age, why is it that we have not been able to school our young brothers, you know, about what it means to be a man? Because see here. We're still in the whole idea of slinging dick is supposed to be what being a man is all about. Look at these brothers out here who got all these goddamn kids by these many different women. Okay? And, and in, in my eyesight and in my thought process, I still see that as some residuals of that slave mentality. All right? I see it as that because... Back when we were, when, you know, our ancestors and stuff were uh, under lock and key and, you know, on lockdown and carrying on, you know, and they were selling us off and things and, and splitting up the families and things of that nature. Men, you know, they, they would have sex with their women and carrying on because they didn't know if that was the last time they would see them. And of course, you know, the whole idea was to have children to, to you know, to raise the family. And then, of course, the whole thing of having so many kids was hell. You had a number of field hands, you know, it's sad, but that's what it was. Um, and so because we did not know when they were going to get sold off of this, that and the other, that was your calling card. That was your lasting thing. And now here we are in, you know, in this particular 21st century. 
And yet the idea of being a man seems to uh, seems to be that I have to prove my masculinity because if I can get a bitch pregnant, if I can have all these kids, you know, hell, that shows how much of a man I am. But if you ain't, if you can't take care of them, child, what what is it? Did, I don't know if y'all know the story about the children in Tennessee. It's two particular guys. Um, this is 2018, so I want to say this is maybe about five or six years ago. Um, at that time, the boy was 33, and he had 31 kids. And how they found out about it was because he had went down to the friend of the court, and his name was on the docket 16 different times by the baby mamas and stuff because they were taking him to, to court because they wanted more child support. But with the money that he had, he was paying like damn near most of his check into child support. But when it broke down, everybody was only getting like a dollar and some change. Okay? Because he had so many damn kids. And so then it was another guy say in Tennessee, uh, and I want to say that it was Memphis because they were both from the same part. It was Memphis or Nashville, one of them. Um, he had 27 kids, okay? And this, that, and the other. I have a friend who, child, he's so fucking fertile to where every time he laid down with a bitch, child, he, he end up, uh, and I'm saying bitch that way because um, some of the girls that, that, that he end up, you know, wedding and bedding and carrying on, well, not wedding, but bedding, uh, they didn't want no prize to him. They just want a, you know, a quickie or whatever. And then what pisses me off about it is that he don't wear condoms and carrying on. He go raw dogging and shit. And knowing his ass is fertile, he ended up having a goddamn baby. Because I think he got 12 or 13 damn kids. Okay, and they're talking about, oh, these kids on my nerves. Well, stop having them. But, but one of the things about him is that I know he's running from his sexuality because he's having a bout dealing with, okay, the idea of the fact that he, he's attracted to men but don't know how to deal with it. So in his mind that, you know, I'm a man because I can have all these goddamn kids or trying to show how much, how much he love pussy, you know, and carrying on. So here we go, brothers. This, this comes down to you. What is it that we're not doing? Or what is it that we're not listening to? What is it that we're not telling ourselves? What is it that we're not honest about with ourselves when it comes down to understanding who we are and trying to define ourselves? Because for so long, we have allowed societal definition of what masculinity is supposed to be or what being a man is to rest, rule, and abide with us to where we... Um, uh, we do not give ourselves the credit that we deserve or we do not take ourselves seriously. You know what I'm saying? We do not know how to communicate. Okay, hold on for a second. Somebody trying to come up in here? Okay, they want me to tag him. I'll tag him. Um, yeah. Okay, I guess that's what that is. Um... We do not give ourselves permission to, uh, to define life on our own terms. And then for those who do, a lot of us will point fingers and say that they have no right to do it, or how could they, or whatever. Or we find it to be callous, or we find them to be um, um, you know, uh, too directed in your face of it, about it. And sometimes we feel, see that they're cold and, and callous and all that kind of stuff, you know. And, and then the question becomes, is that fair? Is that fair for us to do that to them? Hold on, I'm trying to get this because I got to do some typing. And I want to get this to sit up right so y'all can still see me. Can you see me? Mm-hmm. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on. Is that going to do? Can I get it to stay? There we go. Okay. Let me, I got to get my log together. So I'm typing and doing this at the same time. Um, so, so talk to me, children. You know, what are, we, what are we doing and what are we not doing? Let me see who up in here. A, a, a number of y'all, y'all ain't y'all kind of quiet today. Okay, who do we have up in here? I got Rodney and Lopaka and uh, Kurt and Kyrie and Keem. Hey, Keem, what's going on? And Joe. 
uh, up in here. Okay. So, you know, y'all talk to me and tell me what it is that we need to do in order to be better men. Okay, how do, how do we be better men? How do we be better family men? How do we be better single men? You know, how do we be, become better partners? How do we become uh, just better about ourselves? And let's get it from a, a, another man's point of view. Because oftentimes when we have these discussions, it's always a woman doing it. You know, Oprah would have... You know, every time she had these kind of conversations, it's always from a woman's point of view. A woman always said, what a man need and she need and blah, 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 blah. And uh, we never talk about it from a man's point of view. And then, you know, oftentimes, see, and when gay men do it, you know, it, I don't know why men don't take it seriously. Because I think it's because, you know, you see us as being feminine or, or not masculine enough. And you don't want to take the conversation seriously because you think we're talking from the outside of our asses or whatever, or because for, for a lot of times it's feminine men who say it or, or bottoms, you know, obvious bottoms. And you feel as though that they don't have uh, that gay men don't have a right to to express what it is to be a man. But we need to have these conversations coming from a masculine standpoint, coming from a masculine point of view and know that there is no one set answer, because oftentimes we end up talking and and want to be right instead of accepting that there's a myriad of things uh, on the spectrum and, and, and on the table. You know what I'm saying? Oftentimes, uh, like our straight brothers, honey, they, they may not want to have a conversation with a gay man because you don't understand the idea that another man is attracted to uh, a man. Okay, or, or 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 more so, have sex with it. That's what it is. You you don't uh, you you not comfortable with the idea that men have sex with men. Now we talking about women having sex with women, well, because you're attracted to women, honey. That's a fantasy. That there becomes that. Whether you agree with it or not, honey, you can still find a way to find to get yourself in that equation, to where it can still be pleasurable for you. But when we have these kinds of discussions, we don't never come to it in, in a sensible kind of way to where we can sit and say, hey, you know what? Mm. You know, that's 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 something there. How do we as men become financially responsible without it becoming an issue? You know what I'm saying? Without it becoming, oh, this, this and this women, because for those women out there who listen to all of this, I need you to understand something. How is it that a man is supposed to be a man when you won't let him be a man? Because because in your mind. As long as he's spending his money, as long as he's sitting up there taking care of you, your wants and this that, and the other, then that's what he's supposed to do. But what are you doing to bring that that you bring it to the table besides fucking him that says that he's supposed to do all that? Because, girl, fucking ain't hell. As you know, men can get that a dime a dozen. So, Miss Singh, what is it about you that makes you so special that he's supposed to spend this particular kind of money? Cardi B done put something up there. Y'all seen that little, that little video? When she talking about something, you can't just be coming with one or two hundred dollars like you did back in the in the seventies and the eighties and the early nineties because hell, my nails cost. You know, we we get jailed this and that's three hundred. Uh, you know, that's you, she done went down this line to well, you got to come with a thousand dollars to start at least. You know, all this old bullshit. So it becomes okay. So what is it? So is that what being a man is? Have we allowed that to be a the the definition? Of what it is, why have we men and why have we accepted that? Why have we accepted that to be the only definition of what our masculinity and our problems is supposed to be? That as a man, that my my manliness is equated to how much money I'm spending, how much dick I'm laying, how many kids I have. Huh? What is it about you taking care of your, your responsibilities? How are you taking care of your bills? How are you with, yeah, you bought the car, you paid for the car, but how are, you, how, how are you with the upkeep of the car? How are you with the upkeep of your home? Yeah, you paying the bills or whatever, but how often do you get up there and not necessarily fix it, but you know how to call the plumber, you know how to call the electrician, you know how to call the heat man out there, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You know how to sit down there and call the painter to paint the damn house. You know how to sit up there and say, you know what? Uh, we didn't have this carpet for a little piece of a minute. I'm going to go ahead on and get some new carpet. When is it your dime or your idea and not your woman's idea because she tired of the furniture and she want to impress her girlfriends? Oh, you know what? We go on furniture shopping and, oh, honey, let's get some new carpet. Why is it... 
it, why does it always have to be her idea and not yours? You know what I'm saying? Why is it that we get into these, these so-called norms that we have allowed to dictate to us what being a man is supposed to be? Hmm. Why is that? How do we navigate through all of that? It's very interesting, huh? And y'all so fucking quiet today, baby. Oh, y'all quiet today. That's cool, though, because hopefully I'm getting you guys to think. I'm hoping that you guys are really taking this into some kind of consideration. Okay. Uh-huh. Yes, 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 yes. You know, when is it that we're going to understand that it's okay for a man to be spiritual? Huh? Without him necessarily having to be a preacher. Okay. And, and those kind of things. Huh? When are we going to say, understand that it's okay for a man to, to be emotional and to cry and carry on? When are we going to understand that it's okay for a man to admit his flaws? When is it going to be okay for a man to sit down there and to be real with himself when he know that he is out of his league? Some things he just ain't going to do. Some things ain't for him to do. You know what I'm saying? I don't like sports. So how come as a man is, you know, is looked upon that I'm wrong for not liking sports? You know what I'm saying? Being and becoming a man. What does that mean to you? Go ahead. That's a good break. 10.7. Mezzanine, Livingston, Buffalo Bayou, all 10 Forbes. Copy. So when are we going to allow that to come, honeys? Uh, when are we going to stand up for men and say, you know what, this is it? When are we going to get down there and stand up for men with the laws of, as far as uh, the court systems are concerned? Why is it that, you know, a man automatically has to go down to be put on child support or whatever? OK, how come a woman can't pay child support? I mean, they do. But, you know, most of the time. It is, it is because the courts, m most of the time, it's the man who got to pay child support because the woman don't want to be bothered with him, you know. So if she don't want to be bothered with him, you know, she'll go down there because they ain't together or they got divorced or whatever the case may be. Um, they will go through and do whatever they're going to do. And she the one who comes out on the, on the, on the positive end of it or, or at least. You know, we have allowed for that kind of uh, mentality to, to be what it is. We have allowed for the world to sit up there and say, this is what it is and this is how it's supposed to go. But then we haven't challenged it. You know, we have a lot of men who pay in child support and still don't get to see their kids. Um, we have a lot of men out there who are paying child support and the kids ain't theirs. You know, we have women who want to use uh, child support and, and because he wanted she wants an increase, he can't sit down there and 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 contest it, even if he has another family. You know what I'm saying? So when do we as men stop allowing all this shit to, to become normals and definitions of what it is to be a man in this particular world? Hmm. When do we allow ourselves to define masculinity for ourselves versus taking on the societal norm of what masculinity is supposed to be. And when are we going to allow ourselves as men to stand up for men and say, you know what, that may not be my bag, but you do you. And meaning not just to, not just to say it because you're just trying to, to throw him off to the side or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Or you're trying to skate around an issue. Again, straight folks do that all the time with gay folks. You may be uncomfortable with the whole idea of, of, of what you perceive to be gay. And more so, you're uncomfortable with the fact that two men are fucking each other. You can't get around that. And that's fine. It ain't your bad. It ain't your thing. But how come you can't be comfortable enough in yourself and in your masculinity to where you could stand in yours and still affirm mine? Without it meaning that you you coming over to the dark side, without it meaning you got some secret agenda, you know, and for the brothers who do 
Why is it that we feel that we got to criticize those brothers? How come they just can't be brothers who are comfortable with their sexuality? Gay men, we do this all the time. Oh, he must he must be what he bi curious. Now he bi curious because that's somebody that you are attracted to. And you want him to be bi curious because you want to sit down there and taste the water. See, let's be honest with these kind of conversations. Okay, let's be honest with these conversations because see, we as men this is a woman's world. A man just run it. Okay, I've been saying that for years. Um, okay, I've been saying that for years. But at the same time, we have to really sit down and get with it and, and really understand what our place is. Because you want to rule it and carry it on, honey, but we want to rule it with some kind of Neanderthal kind of bullshit. Okay? You want to rule it and, and, and want to stand behind something that really means no hill of beans to nobody. Okay? Why is it that we are afraid to let a woman sit down there and be paid the same amount for the same kind of work? I mean, hell, okay, you did not, we as a whole, and I'm not saying all of us individually, but as a whole, men were not comfortable with the whole women's rights movement. And I'm going to say white, straight men, because black men, hell, we have always been empowering to our women and carrying on. What has happened was the women's rights movement, particularly white women, got into the mindsets of black women and was and they helped destroy our families because shit, what we were doing, we were doing it all the time. The, the whole dynamic was, like my mama told my daddy, honey, if you the head, then I'm the neck and you can't move without me. So we, we have always had that dynamic. We knew what it was to sit down there. If, you know, the, the whole Superman Wonder Woman routine, Hell, Superman was, was the one. Wonder Woman was the backup. Now, hell, if Superman took a hit, Wonder Woman come out there, bullets and braces, and, and knew how to whoop ass, and knew how to lead, lead the fight. That has always been us. But we have allowed for shit to come up in there and redefine our whole, our whole mean of things. Okay, we have redefined that. We know how to work against controversy and carrying on, but we have allowed the shit to come up in here and bite us in the ass. And now we as men are sitting up here looking stupid. We're looking crazy. We want to act as if we don't know what the hell to do. And we have allowed for the outside influence to come in and tell us what it is to be a man. How is it that we as men have allowed society to say and tell our children that going to jail is a rite of passage. We as men have allowed our sons, our nephews, to sit down there because they're bitten at men and all this old bullshit. We have allowed that because we said that that's what being a man is all about. We have allowed that to come out here and to infiltrate us and tell us that we're supposed to let our kids go to jail so they can get some, some street points, so they can get some street cred. Hmm? What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? I don't get that. How do we as men thrive knowing that in this particular world, everything about being a man is scrutinized with, with, with the tiniest of, 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 of teeth on a comb? How do we allow that and then still say that we men? To my conscious children out there, how do we allow ourselves to be so fucking pro-black and so fucking woke to where you don't even know how to sit down there and tell these brothers about taking and, and saying about raising their pants? And I know this becomes a hot button because I, had, I got into it with my friend Haji. Haji would sit up there and say, well, no, it ain't about pulling up your pants and carrying on because... Hell, when they was marching, they was marching in three-piece suits. So, you know, and they still, and blacks still didn't get nowhere. So, no, here's the thing about that. And the three-piece suits or whatever, we, the whole idea of that was so that we could be seen as respectful and respectable, okay? And in that particular climate, it wasn't about that. You know, blacks was just considered to be the, the eels and, the, and, and, the, and the, the miscreants of society at that particular time. So regardless of what you wore, honey, they didn't want to see it anyway. But in this particular uh, culture, where... We know what the sagging pants mean because you tell these kids all the time, you know, that's a jail culture, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it means this. It means it's a twofold meaning. Okay. 
it's a twofold meeting. That whole thing with jail, number one, you couldn't have belts to carry on. So if they gave you something that was too big, it was just too big. And it was going to say you had to keep pulling your pants up and this, that, and the other. It was too big. And the second thing, of course, of what we always tell the folks, well, here, you know, if you were sagging your pants, that meant you was the bitch in, in jail or whatever. You was the one who was going to get fucked and blah, blah, blah. All right. <coughs> Well, however true that is, and I've never been to jail like that. So I'm just going by what I've seen on television, what I've heard from folks who've been there, and et cetera, et cetera. So if that's the case and it's not working, when you tell that to these young kids or whatever, so now what? Because they hear that I almost knocked the shit out this one boy. I was working at a school, and, you know, I'm out and open and carrying on. I live my life out loud because, because I'm me. Uh, and the one child sit up there, I told him, I said, either you're going to pull your pants up or you're going to take that shirt and pull that shirt down because don't nobody want to see all that. That little fucker turned around to me and said, what you doing looking at my ass for, you fucking faggot? And I almost put my chest, my fist through his chest. I was like, you dumb ass, what the fuck you mean how am I looking at it when you got it exposed for the world to see? You got your ass out for everybody to see and you gonna call me a fag because you got your ass out and I'm looking at it. What the fuck sense does that make? Huh? See, that's that dumb shit. Why as we, why do we as men, as males in this culture, sit down there and, tis, and subscribe to bullshit like that and then want to sit down there and act like we got a, we got a mean to fight? Oh, you, no, you disrespecting me. You disrespecting me. Disrespecting what, you dumb fuck? You don't even know, you don't even have no respect for yourself. You sitting up here respecting a culture or some kind of lifestyle that don't got nothing to do with you because you think this is supposed to give you street cred. This is supposed to make you hard. Really? Really? <laughs> Why do we accept that, men? Why do we accept that? Why do we accept that? Huh? Why? 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 Okay, why? Hmm. We've allowed for the underworld, the, 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 the underbelly of the culture because we hustlers. And I ain't worried about, you know, I'm not mad at you for having to get your coin or whatever. What I'm mad at is the way that you try to do it. You want to fuck up your community. You want to fuck up everything else. You want to bring harm to your family. A man don't bring no harm to his motherfucking family because he got to do what he got to do. A man don't do that. Okay. Not a man. Okay, now that's what I've been told. I've always been told that's what a, a, what a man is supposed to do. If you got to go out there and handle your business, you went to go handle your business, you didn't bring that shit home. Your home was your sanctuary. Your home was your castle. Your home was where you sat down there and everything was supposed to be your peace, your center. Okay, which is why when you sit down there and you and and you with your woman or or your partner or whatever, when you come home, your home is supposed to be everything. But we as men, we have allowed for bullshit to infiltrate us. We have allowed for bullshit to come up in here and tell us how to be a man. When a lot of that bullshit don't mean nothing but bullshit. You understand? We have allowed the idea of what masculinity is supposed to be. We have allowed it to become stupid. We have adulterated it into meaning nothing. Okay, it has nothing to do with nothing. Okay, we do not know how or what being a man really is these days. Okay, uh, so. That, that, that. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Let me come, up, I'm a, let me come to the comments. Honey. Y'all starting to talk a little bit now. Okay. Let's see who done came up in here. Leo done came up in here. Douglas, you up in here? What's that? Come on now, talk about it. Well, thank you, brother. You talking, man. Daryl, you done came up in here? Douglas, okay, oh, there's a round of applause. Thanks, uh, Daryl. Hey, now, D Douglas, you say what, well, Demetrius, you talking, man. I'm hoping I am, and I'm, I'm hoping that well, the words that's coming out of my mouth, honey, are able to resonate, but I'm hoping I'm not preaching to the choir. 
And if I am preaching to the choir, then it's time for the choir to go sing. It's time for the choir to go out there and do your part of the ministry. You understand? And all of that. Okay, Michael Todd then came up in there. Hey, baby, how you doing? You said, you okay, you keep that mess at your villa. Okay. <laughs> okay. Was, you know what? And here's the thing, because oftentimes, see, what we have allowed is that we have allowed the neighborhood to become the villa. You know what I'm saying? We have allowed that to be that. And, 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 and I'm going to go back to my women folks here, because, see, women, I'm going to you. Because, see, one of the things that we do know is this. Men are always looking for validation. We need to always know that we're doing something right. We need to know that because, see, we, when we out here, when we out here busting our ass to carry no, we need that validation, that push to say, Bitch, hey, baby, listen, I need you to do. You doing good. You all right, baby. You doing all right. It's going to be all right. Even do my hard times or whatever, baby. I know it's hard right now, but we're going to get through this. We need to understand and keep that going. But women, you have got to the point where. Women have been told, you don't let no man, you don't let no man, you don't let no man. Okay, to the point to where now, you know, there was a time where because you won't let no man, then the man stopped doing, then you had to do for yourself. All right, now you have become the man that you're looking for. You know, uh, hold on, somebody trying to call me. Um, you have become the man that you're looking for, and then because you're trying to be like him, now you want to challenge him. Okay, what the fuck is that? You want to challenge him on his terms, and then mad at him for not being the man that you done became. Hmm? Now we now we starting to move into this whole thing. Y'all got this bitch nigga syndrome. Okay, what's a bitch nigga? Well, that's somebody who sit down there who, who we have allowed to become uh, pimps, ballers, and shot callers, but all they really doing is mooching off the fucking system. You know, women, you have allowed that to be the man because okay. you said, hold on. Go ahead. 1027, Lone Love Patrol, all the step forms. Copy. You have allowed for that to become your norm because you sit up there saying because he talk hard and and, and talk real forceful or whatever, that it's supposed to mean something. See, you have allowed that to be that, okay? Women, you have allowed that, okay? Hold on, let me go back. I, I, I'm seeing comments, okay? Let me, let me get your comments up in here. Kyrie, you say, I'm 27 years old and still don't know uh, the exact definition of being a man. I grew up in a house full of women and was always told to act like a man or, or go do manly things. I hated it because... Wait a minute, hold on. I just uh, here we go. I hate it because I didn't have a male figure to look up to. Uh, so when I was told that I found myself confused because I was only doing what was portrayed in front of me, which was in the house, learning to clean and cook and clean, etc. So over the past couple of years, I built my concept of what I thought a man is and what a man should and shouldn't do. OK, so see now, Kyrie. As a 27-year-old baby, see, now you're at a point where you get to define your manhood. You get to define what being a man is all about, and you get to pattern yourself after men who you admire. See, this is what, we, see, all this when we talk, it takes a village to raise a child or whatever and to mentor other adults because you get to see in the, in, in the community the type of man that means something. You know the type of man that got it going on and it's like, damn, you know, wow. And those kind of attributes are something that you want to try to live up to and follow. Because, you know, growing up in a household full of women, that's, that's not a bad thing. It's just that what happens is you get your idea of masculinity and stuff from a woman's perspective. And that's not necessarily wrong, but what happens is for male children, we don't necessarily have that, that the jail. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then what ends up happening is on the other side of that coin, we get a lot of masculine dudes out there who try to tell you that being a man is, and then they get sucked into this whole societal definition of slinging dick and, and making sure you don't let no woman, you, you know, you put your woman in check and all that old bullshit, and then you don't have a, an actual balance because the more you get that, 
Then you get the you get it from the other end where women say, "Well, child, you don't let no man. You don't let no man." So there's no real balance there because nobody's being honest with the shit. Okay, Hodge, I see you that came up in here. Okay, Michael Todd, you say, "Well, keep that mess in your villa. I don't allow other people's conflicts in my safe place, which is home." Now you know what? Now <laughs> that should be everybody's rule. I can't say that I follow that all the time because I'm such a caregiver and a nurturer. And things, and I'm I'm so wanting to help the world and and help everybody with their problems, to where yeah, at my doorstep, child, you know I'm the one girl. Come on in, what's wrong, baby? You know I'm one of those kids until it gets on my fucking nerves, and then folks forget that I have nerves, and when I get tired and and carrying on, then I become the bad guy. Because now I'm not sitting up here co-signing your bullshit, which I never do, because bullshit and me are allergic to one another. At the same time. Because I'm not there for you the way you thought I'm supposed to be, then it becomes a problem. You know what I'm saying? And then oftentimes I have I have made the relationship or built the relationship like that to where then I end up letting them down because I'm not being who they thought I was. You know what I'm saying? So it's a double edged sword at the one of which I had to take my responsibility in it for allowing it. You know what I'm saying? From the jump and not giving it a cutoff point or whatever. At the same time, those who are looking for that, you know, the, the, the takers of the world, they're going to take and take and take until they can't take no more. And then when they can't take no more, they're going to get mad at you and make it your, oh, excuse me, make it your fault. How do you say what? Women trying to live that Tyler Perry presents life. <laughs> life. <laughs> You know what? I can't fuck with you with that one because, see, <laughs> Lord have mercy. I can't fuck with you with that one because oftentimes that there is. And, and not that that's necessarily a bad thing. It's just that what happens is, you know, we're, I know I am all for empowering women. But at, at the at the at the point of empowering women, it doesn't mean that you're supposed to depower men. Or de-escalate men or demasculate men. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean that all men are supposed to be effeminate either. You know, to where you want men to be in, in touch with their soft side, but hell, you don't want them to be so in touch with it to where they don't know how to handle business. Because see, there's a, there's a difference between a gay man and see, this is why... You know, y'all know you, you, the word, those, those derogatory terms are carrying on that, you know, we, we are only allowed to say to one another. You know, we get mad at folks for saying nigga and this, that, and the other, but black folks say it all the time. But, but, all right. Well, in, in LGBT world, we, you know, we're the same way with sissies and punks, okay? Because there's a complete difference between a gay man and a fucking sissy, okay? And oftentimes, or, and, 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 a, and a real punk, Okay, because a punk is somebody who got all this mouth, but don't know how to back that shit up. You know, you want to sell all sit up and sell all these motherfucking wolf tickets and shit. That's a punk. Okay, or want to wait till you hide behind the crowd. Okay, that's a motherfucking punk, bitch. You ain't you ain't you ain't shit. You ain't nothing unless you with your crew. A sissy, on the other hand, a sissy is that little bitch that sits down there and act as if they don't know how to handle nothing. That, you know, you get them no feminine guys that in the relationships with, with their boyfriends or whatever and will, will let themselves get their ass whooped because they figure that's what they're supposed to do because they, they, oh, but that's my man. And they think that they're supposed to do that and being fishy and all that old bullshit. Okay, sisters will sit down there and will do shit and will sit there and be all in your face and carry it on. And then want to sit down there and create a fight or cause a fight, run from it, and then want to keep talking. See, and there's, and, and there's a borderline with that punk. You see, a punk will sit down and they'll do all that with, with their with they crew. Okay? They'll do all that with their crew and shit and, and carry on all in the essence of wanting to be a, what a man is supposed to be. You know, the punks, the down low children usually fall up in that category of punks. You know, they'll sit down there, uh, they're one way in the dark, honey, and they're in the daytime, honey, they're a whole completely new person, you know, and carrying on with new ideas and all that bullshit. Sissies, on the other hand, 
are, are, are they're them children honey, who sit down there, they like to, they keep up a lot of drama. They keep up a lot of suspense and care now, and they want to get mad because somebody ready to whoop their ass. You know, and carry on. No. And then don't want, they, they, will, they will bring problems, but then have no idea, no order of wanting to solve a problem. See, those are sissies. Gay men, on the other hand, see, we'll sit down there, we will march, we will, we're on the front lines of carrying on, and we'll sit down there and come up with some resolutions. Because, see, even if it means cutting you, cutting you the fuck out, but you know what, I'm done with this. Gay men will sit down there and handle shit like me and I supposed to handle. Now, you may not like it. You may not understand it and care no, but we're going to handle it. You know what I'm saying? And, and gay men, have all, we have never underestimated our own masculinity or whatever. We never have. It's been the straight children who don't understand us that want to question our masculinity because it's not as hard as theirs. You know. Satchel, hey, love, how you doing? You know, came up in here. Thank you. Uh, Michael Todd, you say what? Allowing a man to live in your home and you are on Section 8. You running everything in your home, paying for everything and buying everything for your man. But the first time the man talks back. Wait a minute. Hold on. The first time the man talks back or do or don't go with the flow, loud talk or screaming or disrespectful is, uh, is tossed in the man's face and then get out. Sometimes a man will pull out that survival sex tactic to have shelter. DL trade. Ha! Ah, okay, talk about it, child. A man might do whatever he needs to in order to be off the streets. Honey, don't you... Okay, now listen. 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 Listen, listen. The children. Okay, now did you go there? Now see, that's a whole, that's a whole different kind of motherfucking game right there. And again, again, this is shit that we have allowed to infiltrate us as men. Because, see, we have allowed a man and a hustling man to sit up there and say that that, that kind of hustle is cute. We don't police ourselves. We don't do nothing. And we as gay men, that kind of DL trade shit, we have allowed that to be normal because we think that's supposed to be a part of the culture. We say that's supposed to be what we about. And that's the kind of shit that get our heterosexual counterparts looking at us like we crazy. But like, what the fuck is all this bullshit? You gonna take that? And then we get women looking at us telling us, ain't no good men. Bitch, what the fuck you talking about? And when we say ain't no good men, you get mad at us. Bitch, look what the fuck the options are. Because your ass has sit up there and told this motherfucker, oh, because his dick was good, that he, he was, he was the, 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 the cat's meow and all that, but he ain't brought nothing to the motherfucking table. He not even the table himself, bitch. He was a crumb. You sit up there, you done provided this and provided that, and all he had was dick. Bitch, this shit, dick is a dime a dozen, and that's a baker's dozen, child. Girl, bad. Hold on a minute. Y'all come on up in here and start talking. I got to put this shit in this damn lock. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. So, again, it goes back to us men, me and me and me and me. What are we doing to, to being and becoming a man in this particular world, honey, in this day and age? What does that mean? Okay. Okay, what does that mean? And why have we allowed ourselves not to stand up and be our own man without without scrutiny from the world. Okay. How did you say, well, but that's why he there. Make him mad so he can use penis like Robitussin. No, that's not why he there. That's just the game. That becomes a game. See, the song that got it fucked up, break up to make up. That's all that, uh, that's all we do. Uh, first you love me, then you hate me. It's a game for fools. That's the song, child. Okay, that's a song. But what it is, is that we have allowed that. See, we have allowed certain things to become normal in certain cultures. You know, we have allowed it to become a culture. And how are you real good for saying that this was a, uh, what, what do you say, a single, single mother thing? Hold on. Go ahead. Air 27, back house patrol. Normal activity this time. Copy. You know, that whole single mother syndrome that you say, Hodge. Okay. Uh, again, are we, spitting, are we smitten for love and relationship and, 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 and intimacy and all of that? Scared to be alone? Do we sacrifice ourselves? Do we sacrifice our identities just for the sake of saying? You know, what is all of that? Okay. What is all of that? 
Um, and why do we accept it? Minfo, why do we accept that? Okay, and Hodge, I, just before you came in, I was talking about the whole idea of why is we why do we as men are not on getting these boys to to pull their pants up and shit and having a better a, a better uh, identity for themselves. Why are we not on that? And I know your argument is, and I said it earlier. Well, back in the day when they was marching, they was marching three piece suits and this, that, and other. They ain't got nothing to do with nothing. And I'm telling you, um, um, I, and I and I tell you all the time that I disagree with that. I mean, I agree, but the whole thing of it is was that the times have changed, and now we're in a place to where now the whole idea, the representation of what men are supposed to be. We have allowed it to be sagging pants. You showing your ass to everybody and they get mad because they telling you you showing your ass. You know, why have we allowed that to become a norm when we say we're supposed to be men folk? Okay, what man goes around showing his ass unless uh, unless it's a sexual move? Huh? What man does that? Okay, gay men don't even do that unless we're at the strip club or whatever. We will we wear tight pants, but we won't have our pants sagging. And now that we are, because now, you know, this whole idea of trying to blend in and, you know, <laughs> you know, be masculine trade, honey, I'm mask for mask. OK, that's a whole I got to talk about that in a minute, honey. Uh, that's a whole nother thing. Um, you know. What is that, children? What is that? OK, what you say? Uh, the pocket that came back in, single mothers trying to make, uh, uh, trying to make it a mentality. <laughs> no, you're the single mother trying to make it mentality. I misread that. Okay. All right. And then you say, well, I said black men were hanging from trees in suits. Same difference. They, they were marching in three-piece suits, hanging from trees in suits. Same difference. You Basically, the whole thing of it was is that they wasn't around sagging their pants or whatever. And that it, it doesn't matter because they were hanging in trees in three-piece suits. But the whole idea was, in that particular time, was, um, you know, the whole idea of the suit was so that we could be respected and things of that nature. Hell, the LGBT movement started that way. We didn't want to be out there all flamboyant or whatever. They wore suits and dresses, you know, trying to look like their straight counterparts or whatever, so that they could be noticed or recognized or taken seriously, and it didn't mean anything. So the whole idea now is, now that we're not marching in three-piece suits or whatever, the whole idea is that now the rite of passage is men folks sagging their pants and saying, oh, I'm a man, or oh, I'm a thug, or I'm a this, or I'm a that. I'm keeping it real. I'm hard. This is my street career. This is, this is my swag. What the fuck is all of that? And yet we're supposed to be trying to, we're supposed to be implementing something. The whole idea of going into a restaurant and you got a, a server coming to you sagging his motherfucking pants. What? What? No. And what pisses me off even further is that bosses and jobs are allowing that. But I know if you don't pull your pants up on your ass and have a better presentation for yourself, I don't care what you do when you're on the, but in here. Okay, why, you know, we, have a, we, we, we don't allow that. You know, Michael Todd, you say mother and fathers need to instill education first, making going to school number one, not the, the, the latest fad. Uh, fad. Fad. Uh, I, I get that, but you know, let, let me challenge you with this one, Mike, because what do we do now when education is not the commodity that it was? Because see, again, in the whole idea of being masculine and carrying on, you know, we have allowed the streets now to become the education factor because hell, now in this whole thing of being a man, I can make more money on the street in a day than what the teacher was making in a year. So hell, what, what, what more so in the week, you know, the little small times. They can make that in the week, what you're going to make in a year. OK, and I don't need no college education for that. So the idea becomes what what is the education? What what are we going to teach them? Because, see, again, in this whole thing of being and becoming a man, we got those men folk out there who are telling their babies what it is to be a hustler, what it is to sit down. Now, you don't let no motherfucker run up on you, a nigga. You know, we got motherfuckers doing that, showing them how to shoot guns and shit, how to go snuff somebody out over some bullshit. OK, because that's what being a man is. Huh? Now, is it right or wrong? That's debatable because I can't tell you what. Because you can't, you know, trying to tell somebody how to raise their kids, that's a whole separate issue. But the whole idea of what being a man is, that's why I am. Okay. 
Here we go. How do you want to say men sagging their pants is a signal for help, like a car with its check light engine. Come on. Men didn't sag their pants if women and men didn't have a bed and strawberry milk waiting, waiting and waiting, waiting on them. You want to say strawberry milk? You so motherfucking stupid. You so stupid. You stupid, stupid, stupid. Not a bed and strawberry motherfucking milk. <laughs> <laughs> I can't with you, fucker. I can't with you. You hear me? I cannot with you. <laughs> hey, Derek, I see you that came up in here and joined the conversation. Thanks. Wait a minute. Hold on. Give me a second. Uh, what we got? Hold on. What? what uh, shit. Okay. I'm telling y'all, I got to put this stuff in, into my system. Because we're getting ready to switch out in a few minutes, and I got to put all his stuff up in here. Uh, yeah, but but let's go there and let's talk about what this is about being a man in in this society. You know, hold on, security. Hey, how many we got? Okay, thanks. Oh, no, we got 128 checkouts, child. So I got to get ready to go, get ready to do that, but I got to put his stuff up in the system. Okay. Uh, but, again, going back, what is it that we're going to do, men? Okay. What are we, what are we going to do? Of, of redefining ourselves. Do, uh, is it something that we need? That, that's a bigger question. Do we need to redefine it or is, is, does it still need to be individual? Huh? Um, is that still an individual thing? That's a good question. That's a real good question. Because, see, I can sit up here and I'm saying it needs to be refined, redefined because I don't like it. But maybe that's just my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Perhaps maybe it doesn't need to be redefined. Perhaps maybe... Um, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm full of it or whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. What do we need to do with this particular situation? Okay. Michael Todd, you say what well, being a man, paying your own way and not depending on tricks or stunts, being independent and treating people with respect. Ha! Huh? I could deal with that. I could deal with that. Paying your own way. Okay. Learning how to ask for help when you need it. That's a big one. That's a real big one. Okay. Because oftentimes we don't got caught up in our pride or whatever to where we don't know how to ask for help, you know, uh, and carrying on. So how, do, uh, you know, how do we get around that? Uh Oh, here we go. That's my alarm. OK, how do we get around that cheering? You know, and things of that nature. Huh? <laughs> Okay. Yes. It's, 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 you know, and this is kind of deep. It's kind of deep. Redefined. Yes, we have evolved. Okay. That's uh, Michael Todd saying that. Um, so, you know, what do we do, people? What do we do? That, that becomes a question. So now I'm going to leave that up to y'all. I'm going to leave that to y'all. Because we could go on and go round robin. Derek, you say, well, always ask if someone needs something. Well, uh, you know, that, that becomes a hard thing because one of the things, that, again, about being a man in this society is that uh, we don't know how to ask. You know, we don't know how to... Um, what am I doing? Oh, here we go. We don't know how to um, to ask for help or whatever because we see that as a sign of weakness. We see that as a sign of not knowing how to take it. No, that's the wrong thing. Shit, two twenty three. That uh, uh, wrong one. Um, 
we see that as a sign of of everything else. You know what I'm saying? This is the one. Um, so what do we do, children? What do we do? Okay. I just say what me and Eva gave me a need to go back to being visionaries. What are your goals or uh, on journey on, on your journey in this life? Derek, you say pride. I'll go with that. I'll go with both of those. I will go with both of those. How about that? Visionaries. I like that, Hodge. You know, being able to see yourself, you know, being able to, to, to set your goals, you know, and things of that nature. I like that. I, I go with that all day. I would go with that one all fucking day, you know, because we have gotten away from all that. We have gotten away from understanding that, you know, we could we actually can see into our own future and stuff. I, I give you that. I give you that. But here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to let that be that. I'm going to let y'all ponder on some things. And I'm going to get up out of here because we're going to get ready to switch out of things. So on that note, honey, finish all of your crumbs because the tea has been dished. Uh, and you've been dishing tea right here with Big Meats, right here with the Donut Factory commentaries, honey. If you love me, tell a friend, honey. If you hate me, tell an enemy. But do know there's one way, shape, style, form, or fashion that everything that I'm doing will move forward. Click and share this video with everybody. Let's get this conversation going. And men folk, hey, we got a lot to do, don't we? Huh? Let's talk later. Bye.